Nick Montgomery had five games to save his Hibernian career, but four goals from Aberdeen today may have just booked them a one-way ticket back to Australia. Welcome back, guys, to Fog Football. And it looks like Nick Montgomery might be hopping out of the Hibs seat and straight back to the land down under because Hibernian, they went down under today and they did it big style, losing four goals to nil against, let's be honest, an average Aberdeen side, an Aberdeen side that has been struggling for all the season, albeit despite having a couple of good results in Europe and they have began to, under the new caretaker manager Peter Levin, to play some decent stuff lately. But this is still a horrible result. When you're Hibernian, you shouldn't be losing 4-0 to anybody at home. I mean, if you're going to lose 4-0, at least let it be to one of the old form, not to Aberdeen, not to one of the new form. No, definitely not. And I tell you what, Hibs fans will want to hibernate till the next manager comes in. When will that be? Only time will tell. The sacked managers prematurely recently with Maloney. I mean, even Lee Johnston, right? They should have gave him the Aston Villa game. I never got that at the start of this season, right? I think he earned that. But you look at Nick Montgomery, oh, this guy's coming in for the A-League. Well, you know what? It's just no good enough. It's, it feels more and it looks more like the F-League. It's shite. A, B, C, D, E, F, G? I, E, F, G, S, H, I, T. It's shit. The, the guy's offered nothing. They haven't improved. It's just mediocrity. This team... I don't care. I mean, he, look at the amount of players they signed in January, like loans to help the guy out. Hibs will not finish top six next season. Not yes, he chance. was supposed to be the new Ange Postacoglu, but it's not really worked out that way. Hibs don't have the players, right? I look at Aberdeen, they're a mess this season, but they've got the players. They've got the players to easily finish fourth next season, in my opinion. Hibernian just don't really have that. They've got no defence. Goalkeeping options aren't great. Even their attacking options, I don't think, are fantastic. Their best players aren't at the top of their game anymore. Uh, they lost Nisbet, never really replaced them. I don't think Boyle has been up to scratch really ever since returning to Hibernian. Yeah, I just I look at this Hibernian team, I think they need a massive clear out. I don't think it can be fixed in one transfer window. I think whoever takes over Hibs is going to need time. And I think they're going to be needing probably two, three windows just until they've got this, a team capable really of trying to get back into those European spots because I just look at this Hibs team and, and they're so far off it. It's not a good side. It's not a good players. When was the last time they had a good team? When was the last time they were playing well? When was the last time they were consistent? It's been a long time. I don't want to bash people's longevity. But, Lewis Stevenson and that other guy, they've been there 16 years, man. I mean, Put some respect on his name, Paul Hanlon. Paul Hanlon, I him. Yeah, the fucking were... captain, mate. Or oh, that other guy. Yeah, I'll bury Hibs if I want to bury Hibs. You know what? Did he have a fun day when he beat Rangers in that cup final eight years ago? He did, so he got a laugh that day. But see those two, they're not good enough, man. We're not talking about Francesco fucking Totti at Roma here. We're talking about two diddy men at Hibs that have just outstayed their welcome. They've stank the joint out. It's the same, it's the same... Oh, hold on, are they getting the blame today the because Lewis Stevenson wasn't even playing? No, they're not getting the blame today, but I I just think Hibs have failed. Like, they, they've kept duds and they just bring in jobbers. So, that's my personal opinion. Martin Boyle, the guy, that injury he suffered before the World Cup, that's killed him. He's not been the same player since then, um, and... It's a shame because, I mean, at one point I wanted Martin Boyle. I mean, all the talk last summer was Martin Boyle was going to go to Rangers. I'm kind of glad it didn't happen. But you look at the rest of their team. I mean, where's the other options? I mean, Rocky Bashuri. One minute he looks pretty decent. Next minute he looks horrendous. David Marshall, he wasn't playing today. But it's just a team with loans and it's a team with not much youth in there. It's just a team going nowhere, man. They need to sack Montgomery now. What's the point? It's... It's, it's a similar situation to the previous couple of seasons. You, why keep the manager that pretty much no fan has got faith in if you're just going to start to sack him in September? At least if you sacked him now and brought someone in, they've got the full summer to deal with. Because I guarantee you, Nick Montgomery will not see Christmas hell. He probably won't even see June. No, i would be lucky if he sees the end of the morrow, I think. I think really? Be, that bad? I think you'll be lucky if he sees the end of the morrow. Uh, they, they need to just bite the bullet. What is the point of keeping him, then getting rid of him in like September, 
you've already wasted the main transfer window, you have to bring a new manager in, and then effectively for the next 10 months, he's playing with the old manager's team, and then by the time he gets to this summer, he's probably already done that shit that the fans already want rid of him, before he even gets a full summer transfer window to himself, so they, they need to do something, they need to get they need to get rid of Nick Montgomery, bring someone in now, or even if they wait to the end of the season, that's fine, but don't be waiting till six, seven, eight games into next season. If they want to bring someone, if they've decided they're getting rid of Nick Montgomery, then either do it tomorrow or do it after next week when the league campaign finishes, but don't be doing it after the summer transfer window. Don't be giving your budget to this guy. He brings in all his own players, and then we're like, seven games into next season and they're like, oh, you know what, we're right, he's not the right man. Then you bring somebody new in that's stuck with Nick Montgomery's players. It's just an ever... It's like a recycling repeat here for Hibernian. It's deja vu, right? They, they do the they same were, shit every... every it's not the time. They thought they were getting an Ange 2.0 with this guy and they haven't. It's failed. Accept it and move on. I mean, it's horrendous. Bottom half going nowhere, man. Scud it 4-0 by an Aberdeen team that... It's been horrendous this season. He has to go today, right? right? Nick, Nick Montgomery says that Hibs played all right in the first half of the year, and they did. Played all right, but that, that's not good enough. You can't play okay for 30 minutes and then lose the next hour 4-0 at home to Aberdeen. And it, it, just, it just doesn't work that way. No matter how good they were in the first half, even if they played the best football that Hibernian have seen in decades in that first half, it matters not because what happens in the next hour just takes everything away from the opening half an hour. And I don't think they were fantastic by any means, but they were the better team. They looked more likely to score. But as soon as Aberdeen got in front, it was downhill for there. If the pinnacle of Hibs, right, is playing better than Aberdeen for half an hour in a match you lose 4-0, you've got serious problems. I'm not even going to say the Hibs did today, because the Hibs did, you need to be in a good position. Oh, and, well, half and an hour Hibs, in, they were in a good position. And, and Hibs weren't really ever in that position, but... Leighton Clarkson, good goal, outside the box, strike, away for the goalkeeper into the corner. Uh, he hit it for a pretty central position, so, I mean, it was a good goal for Clarkson. And then Pulvara, we had another similar one, albeit closer to the goal. And it, this one wasn't so central, but it was another good strike, another one right in the corner. So, good finishing for both Clarkson and Pulvara to give Aberdeen a 2 lead at the break. Uh, then the third goal... Seven minutes after half time, uh, Miofsky, great little finish here. And I know that it's close and he's probably about what, maybe 10 yards out, but this is what Miofsky gives you. And a lot of people will say, oh, this is an easy goal. I mean, it's not really. I can guarantee there's a lot of strikers in the league that would have missed this. So It's the pace, it's the placement. That is the top drawer quality. Yeah, it's, um, well, I mean, it was along the deck, but I get your point. It was Junior Hoylet here, he, he rolls it in. And then you get Clarkson who dummies it and allows it to go into the path of Miofsky and he just slides it right into the corner. Great finish. Um, fantastic. Fantastic. Made it look easy. Made, made it look like he's a 25, 50 million pound player. Yeah, he could go on to be. There's no reason why Miofsky can't go on to be that. Maybe not necessarily Aberdeen, but here, this guy, well, I, I think this guy will get a decent move. And I believe he hit, it, he hit it with his left foot as well. And I'm pretty sure Miofsky is a right foot also. Uh, yeah, good finish there on his weaker foot. And then in the 92nd minute, game was pretty much done. Sokler got a cross in though. Aberdeen wanting more. And Boyd, who made his debut at 16, brought on as a sub. He bundled at home. 92nd minute to give Aberdeen a 4-0 lead at Easter Road. He's got 19 goals and 19 assists in the under-18 leagues. This, and they won the league, by the way, Aberdeen. You need to, you need to back youth. Those stats don't lie, man. Yeah, it was a tap in the day, but that's what you need to go with. You can't... See, uh, teams need to back youth a wee bit more. You do. Well, I think this is the perfect opportunity for the likes of Aberdeen to start giving youth a chance. Yep. Why not give them re Why not give them competitive games in the, the top flight rather than... Th that that will gain you more experience. You will benefit from that more for than you will. Pretty much every team, though. I mean, I mean who, who's not got anything to fight for? I mean, Hearts don't, Rangers don't, Celtic pretty much don't. This is the best time to bring in the young players from your academy teams or whatever, or the under whatever, and, and just give them a chance, see what they can do. So yeah, Boyd got his first goal for the senior team, good for him. I uh, couldn't really miss, but I'm sure there's a couple of strikers in the league that would have missed it, so yep. fair play to him. But yeah, 4-0, now, 
really bad for Hibernian. Nick Montgomery came in after the match, post-match press conference, didn't really take much responsibility, said there's not a lot he can do about it. It's not something you can fix on the training ground. It doesn't seem like a manager taking responsibility. And normally when managers come out and they give interviews like these, it's a sign that their days are numbered. And I do believe Nick Montgomery's days are numbered. I'd be surprised if he's still the Hibernian manager within 24 hours. It's the manner of the defeat. If they lost 2-1, 1-0, he might survive the end of the season 4-0. Look, Hiberni made it quite clear that he had to, results had to improve and performances had to improve when the split was announced. And they haven't. They've got worse. So, yeah, they've nosedived, guys. And that is it for this weekend. The fixtures will be back later on with the SPFL review show. I mean, Hibs, I mean, that's not exactly the updated table we're looking at. Hibs, though, they are sinking real fast. How low can they go? We'll have to wait and see. But until next time, peace.